Hey everybody out there, welcome to another episode of Gay Side Stories. I'm your host, Trillificent. As always, you guys, make sure you check out GaySideStories.com. There's all kinds of information there about guests and short stories and all this other stuff that I do. Also, make sure you guys are subscribing on SoundCloud, iTunes, Google Play Music, Acast, TuneIn, or Stitcher. Do me a huge favor and take a few minutes to go and leave some reviews on iTunes. Leave some comments on SoundCloud. It helps people find this show. Uh, I rushed through that because I'm excited because I have another guest. So I'm going to let my guest introduce himself. Hey, guys. This is Kevin Dwayne of the Outline Podcast. Um, also found on all the stuff that Trillificent listed. So when you go subscribe to him, subscribe to me, too, because it's a group thing, right? <laughs> but what does John say? Doing? We all win? <laughs> we all win. Shout out to the John Effect. Yeah, shout out to him. I like that whole thing that he's doing. Absolutely. Thank you for um, having me on the show, though. No, I thank to say you that for first coming foremost. on, you know. I was, I've been like, I, I think I've said it before. I've been a little overwhelmed with people's interest in the show and wanting to come on and have these conversations. So I'm really happy that we were able to to do this. It's kind of like one of my my dream collaborations because I really, really am a fan of your show. I think I discovered it. Maybe you were six episodes in, and I remember. I think I, I had recently moved into my apartment or something had happened. And I listened to it, and I was like, huh, I like this. Let me go back and listen to the first five episodes. And then it's that thing, so you've binged all of the episodes, and then I'm sitting there like, so ain't no more. I mean, you just <laughs> you just not going to have no more. I got to wait a week. What you mean I got to wait? So well, That means a lot. I mean, and if you like the six episodes in, that makes me feel really, really good, because I listen back to old stuff, and I'm like, oh, I would have did this differently. I would have done this differently. It's just, as you probably see as a podcaster, you want to change things over time. So if you've been down since then, I truly appreciate you, and I'm sure you'll like the changes to come. So that's great. Thank you. Looking forward to those. But yeah, I definitely agree, especially I'm already very critical of myself. So... I mean, it's a sometimes it's a struggle even to just do the show because it's just like I mm, I don't like the intro, mm, I don't like this part, mm, this raggedy. Mm, I, don't, I sound like I I got you know the runs or something. So <laughs> it will it will do that to you. And I think with being a creative in general, sometimes you just have to give set boundaries for yourself and say, you know what people are going to notice it the same way that I notice it. And a lot of times, like, my worst episodes, and I'll never tell people what they are, are, like, some of my most popular, which is crazy to me. Like, I'll Mm -hmm. listen to it. I'm listening to something differently about the episode, and everyone else listens to content. And content is what's important. They don't really care as long as the content's there. Right. I mean, granted, you know, you can't sound like you are in an abandoned warehouse. You know, someone (laughs) will have something to say, but I agree, you know, people are listening for something different so as long as the content is there and i think you know your content has been awesome you know i'm excited to see what you have up your sleeve for your upcoming one year anniversary Uh, me too because i still don't know (laughs) (laughs) you know i'm gonna be honest with you my niggy sense told me that you were going to say that but i wanted to put you on the spot anyway because i'm trash Oh, I mean, no, it's, it's actually okay. I'm okay with it. I mean, I have some ideas um, mm-hmm. just to represent the year, but it wouldn't be too major. But I, I just can't believe that I'm approaching that. I remember starting the podcast. I remember saying, I'm going to do this. I was already doing YouTube and everything mm-hmm. for since 2008. And then um, I was just tired of video production. <laughs> I was like, I'm yeah. tired of this. Like the changes and the lighting and the sweating and the editing. No. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm going to do a podcast. I was already a fan of so many podcasts and I'm like you know what why can I do one and I told my friend as I was on my way to um, Fry's to get some equipment I'm like I'm gonna do a podcast before she could say that's dope I already had the stuff in my car <laughs> hey I, same <laughs> I mean my story's a little different you know I used to have a, a co-host and everything but as far as getting the equipment and just making the decision and buckling down and saying, you know, what? I'm going to do this. Other people are doing it. I have something to say. Let me just put myself out there. Mm-hmm. Execution is key. Execution is key. Agreed. So, yeah. All right. Well, let's move into the first segment, the school and life segment. This is actually uh, becoming one of my favorite segments because with the current climate and the things that we are dealing with as black people as lgbtq plus people 
as just beings in this country, you know, there's so much pressure on us that I think it's important to highlight something and maybe it'll help someone else highlight something that helped you get through the past week. So my school of life for this week is actually it's for the past two weeks because, you know, you guys have noticed I took last week off after my birthday, but that is actually my school in life. You know, I've, I've been kind of riding high on that. I'm not usually a big birthday person. I am for other people, but when mine comes around, I'm just like, I mean, it's just a day. Like, you don't, no one needs to it's make a, fuss. It's an important day. But this year, I tried to switch it up a little bit. You know, I'm not where I want to be as far as, you know, financially and all those things, but it was still nice. So a huge thank you to everyone that, you know, gave me birthday wishes or sent me gifts or something like that, including you. Um, I wanted to give a special thank you to my friends, Glam, uh, Corporate Barbie, and, you know, my, my ride or die, Nikki, uh, they took me to dinner. We had an amazing steak dinner, and I was so full. Yes. And we went, and, you know, we had some treats after that. So I was, lit. suffice it to say, I slept pretty damn well that night. Um, but, and that weekend was awesome because I also got to see uh, my, my babies. I got to see my, my little nuzzin, uh, a.k.a. <laughs> baby buttermilk and i also got to see one of the other babies in our group we called him baby praline um now does nuzzin mean cousin and nephew cousin and niece niece no okay yes. got it even better i love it that's so cute yeah so on my instagram if you see that light-skinned baby that's like five thousand shades lighter than me that is <laughs> nuzzin so cute i love her uh so what helped you get through this past week um, oddly, mine is uh, one of those things where it was productivity got me through this week, and I'll explain a little bit about that. Listen, I mean, as a creative, once again, I feel like that's just going to be my my setup every time. Um, I always feel like I'm not doing enough, if that makes sense. And so, um, last week, I made a decision to take myself off of television. So I have not watched television now for a full week. And so instead of streaming or doing anything else, I'm finding other things to do. So in that time, I've I've taught myself new things. Um, and I'm also a photographer. So, you know, I'm working on, you know, make sure I'm promoting my business and editing photos and then enhancing my skills. So instead of watching Golden Girls or Girlfriends or whatever, I'm putting that into um, other things. It's like old school when you were grounded. I'm grounding myself. I'm taking myself, <laughs> off. you know, I'm grounding myself. No television, but do this, do this book report instead, you know. So um, I'm doing that. And honestly, I think the universe kind of rewarded me instantly this week. It was a great week. I got tons of things that have been on my plate forever done. And it really made the week that much better. So um, that will be my school in life um, for the week. Awesome. I'm actually going to piggyback on that a little bit because I did feel a little guilty that I didn't have a show this past week. So in addition to, you know, resting and doing that kind of stuff, I, I, did do a lot of behind the scenes stuff like I I made a basically I had to I had to start using my calendar because I've had so many people like hey I want to be on the show or I just come up with an idea for a discussion and I have someone in mind kind of how I did with you when I thought about the upcoming topic that we're going to talk about in a bit instantly you came to mind and it was just kind of you know fortunate that we were like hey you know let's collaborate and blah 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 so but I got tons of stuff done I have so many shows planned you know and, and it also feels good and it's kind of a weight lifted off my shoulders because i don't feel like i have to scramble that week or on the weekend and be like what the hell am i gonna talk about on this damn right. show this week so <laughs> you know shout out to us productivity it's important and honestly I, that's another thing about podcasting like you need a week off or every now and then i mean you're you're giving I a do. show every week of the year i i know the fans they want to show every week because you know fans are naturally selfish i am with my favorite podcast what you mean you're taking a break hey. at the same time certain things have to be connected behind the scenes you gotta have a chance to come up like you said come up with new episodes and it's only so you can give a quality show so sometimes you gotta have a vacation and we don't stop people from going on a vacation so they can't stop us from going on ours <laughs> right and it's like you know i mean there are there are other episodes like i still have old episodes you can go back and listen to like if i take a week off go back and listen to your favorite episode there's nothing wrong with that give me an, an additional spin on something that i've already done and i will come back the next week with something good 
So, Absolutely. like I said, I have a lot of good stuff planned. With that being said, so let's move on to the the new segment, the Come Quick. Um, I don't have yes. much here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the name is, yeah. Oh, it's great because it's quick. You know, get in there yeah, and get out, quick. you know. You know. I'm um, here for it. I only have two things this week uh, because I usually don't do a lot of current events or pop culture because I am a consumer of podcasts too so i honestly a lot of that stuff i just want to hear what other people have to say you know i listen to your show i listen to the read i listen to whatever other show you know uh the john effect or all those kind of chicken for those types of things so i don't really feel the need to do it but um there's one that i, I really felt like i i wanted to highlight so that is the the philando castillo verdict um yeah so the the officer's name is Geronimo Yanez. Uh, it was acquitted of second degree manslaughter and two counts of intentional discharge of a firearm that endangers safety. Um, this officer, Yanez, he testified that Castile was pulling his gun out of his pocket despite his commands not to do so. The defense also argued that Castile was high on marijuana and said that affected his actions. Um, after the verdict, I, I was on, I think I was on Yahoo News and I saw another quote that said that the city of St. Anthony has concluded that the public will be best served if Officer Yannis is no longer a police officer in our city. The city intends to offer Officer Yannis a voluntary separation agreement to help him transition to another career other than being a St. Anthony officer. Um, and I'm actually going to let you go ahead and get your thoughts off first. <laughs> Honestly, uh, I've had this conversation over and over again. Even on my show, I'm numb. Mm. And I think the biggest thing is two things here. I feel like my parents did 20-some years ago. Mm. And that pisses me off. The fact that we're not really progressing when it comes to our when I say our black men's relationship to or black people black bodies relationship yeah. to enforcement they have proven time and time that there is no justice for us and also that they're above the law right. they literally can get away and I don't like the bullshit that he got off on saying that he was at fear for his life if you were at fear of a man in a car with his child and his girlfriend you shouldn't be in that goddamn job. Who's really having gunfights with their children in the backseat? Right. Like, who? Who? Tell me. Please tell me. It's bullshit. It's absolute bullshit. You're flexing your power. You wanted to go out and shoot somebody that day. Just say what it is. And I'm I'm, I'm numb to it. I really am. And it's, it's sad. I hate. I would not... I would hate to bring a child into this. I really would. Yeah. Because it's, it's so scary that... And it doesn't matter what age you are you you know you, you sometimes you want to think like oh maybe it's a, a teenage thing nope they're maybe it's a 20s nope they get killed 30s they get killed 40s we've seen so many examples male female gay trans it doesn't matter but honestly i just say live your best life ever and that's all i can get out of it yeah live your best life be happy and that goes into what you said earlier Jeffersen. celebrate your birthdays man that's why we yeah. celebrate them mm -hmm. that's why celebrate your birthdays and your milestones that's, right that's why it's not just another day because anything can happen where you just get pulled over and freak out and i got pulled over well my friend did we were going we were heading out to savannah for just a day trip and we got pulled over on the way there and i was frightened like and i shouldn't have to feel that way yeah but because there were three black men in the car, I was like, I don't like this. And it was a, it was a white sheriff. And I was just I was freaking out because we're going south. I'm already in Georgia and we're going even further south. What am I thinking? You know, and so I hate that we have to live our lives like this, you know? Yeah. And that fear. Um, yeah. To piggyback on what you were saying, that it's not just an age thing. It's also not a regional thing like this has been happening all over the country. And mm -hmm. we know that this has been happening for decades. But with the new age of social media and everything now, it's more it's more visible. I mean, this happened on Facebook Live. Yeah. This man was murdered on Facebook Live or Facebook video or whatever it was. Um all I can say is I'm I'm truly disgusted with the whole thing because even with 
proof, you, you know, you have video, you have testimony, this person still gets away with literal murder. You're fearing for your life and you had to shoot this man seven times, seven times with his seatbelt on. And again, to what you said, the bullshit excuse about fearing for his life, he was reaching for his gun anyway. If I put myself in that position and I said to myself, I said self and self said, what's up? And I said, if I wanted to shoot a police officer who had just pulled me over, I would not tell him that I have a gun, that I legally have a gun. All right. Because why would I take the element of surprise away? Because as an officer, and I put myself in the officer's, in, in officer's shoes and I said, if someone tells me they have a gun in the back of my mind or maybe in the front of my mind, I'm going to be thinking I need to be cognizant of a gun at all times. Right. So for you to say, I feared for my life and he reached for the gun, even though I told him not to. Why would he do that with his family in the car? He has a three year old in the back seat. Why would he do that? Mm-hmm. That doesn't now, make any sense. Now, can you confirm something for me? I don't know. I didn't think was he driving? I thought his girlfriend was driving. Um, I'm not sure. I because I tried not to watch the video and in the in the details that I saw, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, it, it wasn't clear, but I thought that he was driving. Okay, because the video I saw, maybe it was flipped, but it looked like she was in the driver's seat, which I couldn't understand that either. I'm like, why is he on his side? But the video could have been flipped. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, I think the video was flipped because for, I want to say from what I remember, and please, anyone correct us, you know, you can tweet either one of us. Um, I want to say I remember her getting out of the car and she was getting out of the passenger side. Like once she got out of the car, you could tell what side of the car she was on. Um, my other thought on this is this should all caps should be proof that all of that respectability just do what the police say all of that shit is bullshit and it's wrong and you can still end up being murdered in cold blood in front of your family now I'm not saying go out there and buck the police and you know be blasting NWA and be ready to you know die just because you got pulled over for a busted tail light but what I am saying is things of this nature when they happen we need to stop telling each other just do what the police say because it's it's beyond that it doesn't matter what you do you can do everything right this man was a pillar in his community he had no reason to want to get into a gunfight with the police officer he had children of his own but he had he was a teacher he had children that looked up to him and that depended on him they wanted him to be around they loved him so nothing makes sense the argument is bullshit and the fight continues, you know. I mean, I understand what you mean about being numb, and I, I'm. I want to. I don't want to say that I'm numb because I'm not, but I'm not surprised. And no. I think those two, they they are cousins, you right. know, being numb and just not being surprised and being like, okay, here we go, right. what's next. I mean, I won't. I'll never not care, but it's just one of those things where it's like I don't ever trust justice to be served, and that's it's a terrible place to be in. But right. furthermore, you see that they, um, the family of the dog that was shot by the cop, was awarded like so, like a million dollars. A no, dog. I didn't see that. Oh yeah, a police officer shot a dog. Um, yeah, the family won a settlement. They're getting like a million dollars for a dog. Well, I mean that makes sense because in America, dogs are valued higher than black bodies. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's been proven time and time again. You know, white people will go up. They will go to Pluto and back. They will throw themselves into the sun over an animal. But a black person and a person, maybe they don't look exactly like you, but they are a person. Oh, whatever. They're, they're subhuman. Yeah. Um, and shout out to her mom for her reaction videos. Like, I thought it was. I thought it was interesting that, you know, she kept it classy when she was on TV, but then she got on her personal and just unloaded and was like, fuck y'all, this is some bullshit. This man should not be dead. I shouldn't have to bury a child over some bullshit, over a, over a taillight, you know? It's yeah. just. It's always a taillight. I never believe that. Y'all breaking these motherfuckers. Taillights ain't going out like that. They're not. I've never, no. And I've had my taillight out before, and, and I've had police drive right past me. And it, it's right. another motorist like, hey, bro, you know, your, your, your taillight's out. And I'm like, well, shit. Right. You know, and even then I'm like newer. I don't know what kind of car he was driving, but a lot of these newer cars, they have some kind of mechanism where they will let you know if one of your lights is out. Right. Like, you know, when you when you put your your blinker on and it is blinking extra fast, that usually means one of your lights is out. And final point, final point on that. 
the fact that he died over that okay it'd be one thing if you had a warrant out for your arrest or you robbed somebody or if you had someone but the fact that you pulled him over for a tail light you thought he had to lose his life because of that and then why is that you guys forget about all of your other weapons that you have why do you always go to that gun first meanwhile other people white people and i want to be very specific can kill an entire church of people and get taken to burger king that's all i'm saying yeah it's trash they get taken in peacefully they do everything in their power to take them in peacefully and we've seen it i mean there's video i mean the the, and the fact that people can look at those two types of videos and still say he deserved to die is just there's still work to do in this country and we we can just leave it at that yeah yeah come quick i came let's go next one (laughs) Uh, the the second thing is because today uh, that we're recording is Sunday, so I wanted to acknowledge that it is Father's Day. Um, now, like Mother's Day, I don't really celebrate it, and for anyone who is confused about that or has anything to say, then you can refer to episode ten, The Parent Trap, for more information. Um, I will say that my biological father—I call him my bio dad. Um, I've kind of been keeping him and I'm telling all my damn business, but whatever. I mean, this is what I, podcasting is therapeutic. Fuck y'all. Absolutely. It's what I do. That's what people listen. They want to know your business. <laughs> um, I've been keeping my bio dad at arm's length because he's been very, and he's older. I want to say my dad is, he just turned 70 last year. Um, and he's been putting a lot of pressure on me. Like, Oh, you know, everything is in your name and da 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 da. And I'm like, bro, like, You haven't been in my life for like three fourths of it. This is a lot of pressure. Um, But I've also been keeping him at arm's length because I want to be transparent about my sexuality with him. And I haven't I have not done that. And the only reason because I usually am not one of those people where everybody needs to know my business, because who are y'all? I don't ask you, you know, what you got going on between between your legs or behind closed doors. You shouldn't ask me that. But every time I see him, he harps and harps and harps about children and the baby girls. He calls women baby girls, which my father is problematic, but, you know, he's old, so he's um, old with a bad knee. My bio, my biological dad actually calls uh, women broads, so I think I got you beat. Yeah, so you know how it is. The baby girls, the baby girls. And the, the first time he said that, I was like, ain't no kids around here. What you talking about, nigga? Like, I'm like, have you been drinking? And I was like, of course you've been drinking, but... Um, and plus, there's a there's a lot to unpack there. You know, I mean, you know, to be quite honest, every time we talk, we it's it's like a, a broken record. And sometimes I, I feel like I need to tell him I'm like, I am not my mother. These things that you're telling me, this has no bearing on our relationship. I know you've been carrying this weight for the past 33 years, but that's that's not my cross to bear. Um. So yeah. Um. You have any thoughts about Father's Day? Again, Happy Father's Happy Father's Day to uh, Nuzin's father and my godson's father, Jeremy, and all the other babies in my life or children, I should say. Yes. Um. I like you have a very uh, interesting uh, background, which I'm like, oh, I probably should have a podcast about that. I've mentioned it lightly, but never like detail. So um, I was raised by my uncle and aunt, or aunt and uncle, however you want to say it. Mm-hmm. They passed on five years ago. They both passed on within months of each other. So that was kind of the end of celebrating. My um, my biological mother and father are both still alive. I have relationships like, like I would have with like a distant aunt. That's kind of how I consider them. Like I know them, I know where to find them, I know how to reach out. But for the most part, it's not really on some, oh, I'm trying to, it's, you know, respect, you know, but it's not, I don't go out of my way to break my neck to be like, oh, happy Mother's Day, happy Father's Day. Cause that's just not, how life played out but they're cool though so um that th- those are kind of my thoughts i don't think i said happy father's day to anybody today so there's that <laughs> i said it to those few and i mean for just to wrap it up you know what you were saying about like my my mother and my stepfather they can get in contact with me they just choose not to mm-hmm. and even my brother my half brother that i grew up with because i i my my biological father has children, but that's a whole different uh, conversation. Um, but I didn't hear from any of them on my birthday. So 
And I want to say the last time I spoke to my mother, I didn't even speak to her. She she has this thing where she would she would only text me on holidays, and she would be like, "Happy Easter, son!" And I'm like, "Girl, what?" Yeah, it's not authentic. It's fake. And you know, we never. I'm the kind of person I I feel like you know what I'm not even gonna get into that because <laughs> who has time. I mean, listen, make it make it work. <laughs> but I'll leave it at that, you know. Um, so again, happy Father's Day to the fathers listening to the show. And yeah, I think I just came. So hey, Ebo shy, I get it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. awesome. So uh, let's go ahead and move on into the main topic. So again, like I said earlier, when I thought about this topic and I said I wanted to do a show about it you immediately came to mind I'm not exactly sure why so don't ask okay because I was thinking it I'm like oh I don't know I (laughs) want to say it was just a combination of you know some of the things at the time when I was thinking about that you were posting about Mm. niggas um, Mm -hmm, these niggas these niggas and I was like huh and then when I had uh, something happen to me which I've posted about before and we'll talk about that in a bit I, and someone in the comments, you know, I, I told this story about this guy that, you know, whatever, on Adam for Adam. And someone in the comments, I want to say on Facebook, was like, I mean, it just sounded like he's afraid of rejection. And I said, huh. And I said, self. And self said, yes. <laughs> and I said, that would be an awesome conversation to have. Let's talk about rejection. Let's talk about rejection in this community. So, to start off, I want to read... um the scientific explanation that I found on the internet about why rejection hurts. Mm -hmm. So it says that when we were hunter gatherers and living in tribes, the price of ostracism was pretty much death that you wouldn't survive without your tribe. You wouldn't have the warmth of hearth, the protection of fire. Um, Therefore, since we, we have developed as humans, an early warning system, the feeling of rejection to alert us when we might be at risk for ostracism. The more painful the experience of rejection, the more likely humans were to change their behavior to avoid ostracism and to be able to survive and pass on their genes. Meanwhile, those who didn't experience rejection as painful were less likely to correct their behavior and pass along their genes. Um, so there's, that's the scientific reason Good shit. Um, actually, I want to piggyback off of that really quick because I've read this before and that's actually accurate. Mm-hmm. But that's also the same reason why there's so many people who are big into groupthink and can't think for themselves. Right. And it's also why people hate when you have a different opinion from them. Those are the same reasons because of the ostracism and that whole piece. It goes right. back to that. I just want to add those two, too. This is why people are on Facebook talking about, well, that's my opinion. That's my opinion. That's right. exactly because it. They because they don't of that's... want to be ostracized. They don't want to get... Well, we, I mean, they call it ostracism, and I think in current pop culture and current society, what we call it is getting that ass dragged. Mm-hmm. You know, people don't want to get dragged for thinking differently. They want to say what they say, but still be accepted and feel included. And you can as long as you present it right. That, right. People don't Presentation is is key. Really, ninety percent of it. I mean, your opinion, notwithstanding, it's the presentation and how you go about it that determines whether or not you know you might just get a few strands of your edges plucked or whether or not you know your whole wig gonna be you know sitting on the ground absolutely because i commonly say things that people don't agree with but at the same time that's how i present it i present it where i explain myself and i also stand my ground you don't have to agree with me mm-hmm. but this is how i look at it right i think a good example of that is that episode you had where you were talking about your views on dating with your friend mm-hmm. and he was like bitch what the fuck and i was going like, right his whole was like, demeanor his whole know? demeanor and i love stuff like that though yeah. i love it let me tell you why i love it because it shows you how much people are when it comes to cognitive dissonance mm-hmm. like anytime you go against a thought pattern like i i never said that he had to live the same life as that i wanted to live right. but somehow that's how he took it and I'm like, that's so crazy. I'm saying live how you want to live, but this is how I want to live. Why are you so Why aggressive you so about upset? this? <laughs> yeah. Why are you upset? It, it doesn't affect you at all. I agree. Yeah. So uh, based off of that, my question for this part, I have this segregated into kind of too many topics. So my question for that is, in your opinion, do we do you? Ugh, I can't talk. Do you think we're adequately taught to deal with rejection as children or, you know, growing up? 
some of us are, some of us aren't. Um, it, it, it's, I think it's nuanced, mm-hmm. but I'm going to keep it real with you. And my opinion is this. I think women are more taught to deal with rejection from an early age than men are. Mm-hmm. And you can tell by a lot of decisions that men make when they get older. Right. Like women are always told to kind of try to be the best and be competitive against other people. And, you know, for the attention of women, I'm using the the line from the, the flawless song. But um, but, you know, what I mean, like just the idea that they, they they're always looking out for other people because they're trying to they're trying to book the man where the man is told to conquer, 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 right. conquer. Mm-hmm. And, and then the whole idea is don't take no for an answer. So a lot of men haven't taken a lot of no's. Or they're sore losers when they take the nose. And I just that's just my opinion and my observation. It's not fact. But I do believe that women are are a little more into it, that they're okay and they, they get over a little quicker. But it needs to be taught more in every person's life, honestly, because rejection is going to happen. Right. So in my opinion, I don't think we are. I mean, I agree with you. You know, maybe certain people are. But I think as a whole, we're not. I think that we are pushed more to not be afraid to try and not be afraid of rejection, but it's dealing with it when you mm-hmm. are rejected that that's where we're lacking because I think we, you know, most people in their childhood have had something where their parent or some kind of guardian or even another peer was like, you know, don't be scared to talk to that girl or that boy or whatever you got going on, or don't be afraid to try this. You know, what's the worst that can happen. And that's all fine and dandy. It does, that does help. And it is important but where we are lacking is the, OK, if it doesn't work out, what do I do? How do I deal with these feelings? Right. And I think that that it becomes even more important around puberty when you are really when your body is changing and you really are susceptible to group think group think group think, um, you know, in high school and middle school. And, and, you know, you got cool kids, and you got all these different factors. I think that's when it's most important to start teaching how to deal with that, because uh, and so to your point, the difference between boys and girls for boys, I think I mean, I agree with what you said. I think boys are taught to be hard and not wallow in their emotions. They're taught to just get over it, that there's plenty of fish in the sea if it's a dating situation. And I think that can be counterproductive because there aren't many instances where boys or men are taught to to healthily deal with their emotions. And that ties directly into being able to to handle rejection, because when you are rejected, that elicits a shitload of emotions. And if you're not mm-hmm. taught to properly deal with them, that's when shit hits the fan. That's why, you know, you have men going crazy and like you said, making poor decisions or not knowing how to deal with it. And then, you know, same thing for girls. I've observed, you know, like I said, I can't speak for for women, for girls, but my observation has been the same that they're they're taught to compete and be so a plus in order to to get a man that the fear of rejection is inherently programmed into them but still we're falling off on how to deal with it when it occurs mhm um agree okay so let's move on to some more let's let's bring it down to a more local level so i want to talk about um rejection on these apps or you know social media whatever so <laughs> the apps them damn apps we keep Ooh. coming back to these apps because they're, they're just, prominent man they're just, they it's, just a, it's a part of it like ronald matter said on my show a couple weeks ago like they're not going anywhere they're not it's, going anywhere it's literally a fabric of like dating for some you know yeah um so the first thing i wanted to talk about were are some examples that you see of people on these apps being scared specifically just being scared of rejection so i have a few um and then i'll let you piggyback on what i say or bring your own awesome so one of the main ones i've seen of people being that i think people being scared of rejection is just not having any type of pictures on their profiles um i get in some instances where discretion is a must but a lot of y'all ain't doing shit. A lot of y'all are clocking in in your nine to five. You sitting at a desk or, you know, you you hauling kale around or whatever it is that you do. You're not in a position where you need to be that afraid to show your face on these apps. And I think that 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 mindset and that it gets wrapped up in the whole I need to protect my image and I'm scared of this and I'm scared of losing people and da 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 da. When the reality is 
you just don't want nobody to reject you for whatever reason because of what you present. Um, Agree. Another one is, and this one, oh god, these niggas just uh, wanting to be accepted for their personality before they show you what they look like. Um, and I've had this happen to me multiple times. I mean, these these men, niggas, whatever. <laughs> they you know they will chat you up for an extended period of time and they they want a full conversation they want you to talk to them as if you're sitting at a bar or you're sitting at dinner having a real conversation and it's like you you want this in-depth conversation but in any other instance I don't have these types of in-depth conversations with people that I don't know how they look you know, unless I'm calling like customer service to, you know, cuss Bank of America out or something. Right. <laughs> that's different. You know what I mean? But if you're talking right. about you wanting to get to know me on a romantic level or even on a friendship level. And I don't know how you look, because for me, it's and it's not about looks. I mean, I, I'm not dismissing that looks are important because and anyone who says they're not is lying. But I think what it really is. It's not so much of how you look; it's whether or not I'm attracted to you. Those are two different things, and it's unfair. It's and it very is unfair because you are looking at my profile with a picture. You said to yourself, "I'm attracted to him. Let me hit him up and shoot my shot." Why don't I get the same option? Exactly. So you can't. So looks do matter then, because you chose me. So exactly. why can't I then say, "Let me see what you look like"? Listen, I had a whole falling out with this dude because you know uh, this was back in college i mean this is you know showing my age back when yahoo messenger was prominent and i, back in, I used to love yahoo listen i you know i'm in college and you don't have nothing to do and and i was young you know i was a gaby so <laughs> i didn't really know any better so i'm sitting here and i'm having these long conversations with him but i still had enough common sense that when he was like oh i love you um, I want this and I want us to get married. And I was like, I don't know what you look like. I, how am I supposed to get married to someone that I don't? I mean, granted, why are you talking about marriage and love? I mean, we literally, these are keystrokes, nigga. Not even deep strokes. These are keystrokes. <laughs> so, and he got all bent out of shape. Like, it shouldn't matter what I look like. And you should fall in love with my personality. And da -da 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 -da. No, no. And it's like, that's all fine and dandy. But nigga, if I don't like how you look, if I'm not attracted to you, if when I look at you, my dick don't get hard, it's not going to work. And I don't understand why you don't understand that. And who the fuck lied to you and told you that what you look like isn't important when someone loves you? That's bullshit. First of all, fairy tales that niggas love to believe in all have beautiful people in them. So Hello. if you ugly, it doesn't include you any goddamn way. So take that out of your <laughs> head. And then next to that, who the fuck told you that? <laughs> oh, you'll just love me for that, bitch. Right. No. My personality is so popping. <laughs> you should just fall in love with my personality. That but, you know, I'm into you happened. because of how you look. And it's like, bruh. No, that doesn't happen. It does not happen. Sorry. And that's not uh, this is not real life. Um, it's not real life at all. And the last one I have is and I actually I was listening to uh Me and the Gay Homie. Um their last ap episode. What am I saying? their last episode and they had a guest and she was she identifies as a big girl and she was talking about you know dating I'm situations sure. and everything and uh she was saying they were talking about men hitting them you know bigger girls up because they feel like they're less desirable and they'll accept whatever or whoever comes their way and i think that that also there's an element of being afraid of rejection because you don't feel like you are capable of getting someone better or you want something easy. Either way, you're scared of being rejected by what you, quote unquote, mm -hmm. what you think you really want. Because I'm also of the mindset that most men, I don't care what they say, most men don't know what the fuck they want. But that's nope. a whole different conversation. That is the next time you guest on the show. Well, and I, to go into that, I'm not going to go too deep, but yeah, no, a lot of... <laughs> I always know that men don't know what they want because it's always in trend. And honestly, mm -hmm. some some women are like this too. For example, black men have always appreciated big asses, but have you noticed that lately ass is like in for most men? There was a time where titties were in. Mm -hmm. There was a time where small waist was in. Like 
but it's always trendy, which means you're socialized into thinking that's what you want. I remember back when, you know, DMX and John ja Rue were the heyday. So a lot of women wanted thugged out men. And then there was a period of time where cornrows, so everybody wanted men with cornrows and that look. And it's like, it's always trendy. So that's not your actual preference then. That's right. something that you were taught that you should like when you were young. I remember being a kid and people thought I was going to be straight. Oh, yeah, you suppose to want a woman that looks like this. You suppose to want a woman who's this or that or this or that. Like, what the fuck? Like, but yeah, that's another episode. So <laughs> funny that you said that because I have a, I have a quick anecdote about that. Um, when I was younger, uh, I had an, I had a, a, a neighbor and she was a bigger girl. I mean, she was, I mean, big is relative, obviously, but to my parents, she was a big girl. Now, mind you, I had not ever even thought about anything sexual or romantic i was like this is just my friend like we literally we literally just live close to each other we go to the same school and we we chill and because we were friends and i would be like okay i'm going to such and such's house my parents would be like oh you like oh look at oh curtis he gonna like big girls and i was like why is that funny like right. even if that is the case why is that funny and I'm, she's a person she's a person <sighs> but not only that <laughs> to piggyback on what you were saying about it being trendy it also is coupled with being afraid that other other men are going to clown you for liking mm-hmm. what you like if you don't yep. like what's on trend then your homeboys are gonna make fun of you or her with, and be disrespectful about it on top of that like I, I can't remember what song it was but and I think this is in a lot of songs probably a lot of rap songs like that is a like a go to diss like oh your girl chunky <laughs> and it's like okay but what if that's what he like like why is that funny and why is that something to demean him for because he's it's trash it, we do it with, we do it with interracial relationships too yeah. like there's a lot of people who don't go after what they want because they don't want to deal with their fuck ass friends and and what they're into and then um there's a song trying that james uh what she ain't fat just a little thick it's yeah. a whole it's a whole song and i'm just like this is so, the video is actually worse than the song just super demeaning okay. to uh heavier set women and heavier set women are beautiful like that's that's what kills me there's people who are into everyone mm-hmm. that's what it is like everyone has somebody that they're into there's not one archetype that we have to be into yeah because there's so there's such an array of how people look like it's it's ridiculous to think everybody's supposed to like the same thing and then to take it a step further and be like okay now i'm in a position where i'm superior to you because what i think i like is in my opinion better than what you like and it's like actually how about you shut the fuck up Right, because ain't nothing worse. This someone with a terrible ass attitude that so so called looks good to everyone else. No, right. that's Ooh, fucked up. So no. much of that. So much. So uh, those are my three. I, wanna put- I actually just have one to add to that. I agree with all those, but the other one I see is when people have the mean ass profiles of like all the things they don't like. I've seen this one. If you if you fat or if you this, go ahead and block me now. First of all. I'm just reading your profile. Why do I have to block you? That's stupid. <laughs> or if you're into this, don't hit me up. If you're not into this, don't hit me up. If you're not into this, it's like this whole laundry list of things they don't want to get rejected for. Yeah. Instead of instead of just standing in your own truth and saying, this is who I am. Um, I avoid all that on my profiles. I just put, hey, easy going, period, whatever. That's it. I'm not giving you anything. Let's go from there because... I never understood what negative. How does that attract anyone? Yeah. Like, how do you attract anyone by being negative? I and always somebody, say that. I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, this whole section where you're supposed to be talking about yourself, this is what you choose to present. I don't understand that. Why are you shame people? I hate that shit. Shame, where, yeah. where they shame other profiles. Oh, everybody on here is a slut ass hoe. Everybody in here just trying to fuck. Everybody doing this. Mm-hmm. Deleting soon. <laughs> deleting someone i'm like what is the hold up <laughs> wow. you know but i get it because you again and i think that goes back to the scientific de- definition that we were talking about before of even though you may be tired and you don't want to be rejected you are still afraid of that loneliness and being ostracized so he's like okay i'm gonna delete soon but i'm gonna keep it for a couple extra days on the you know hope that mm-hmm. something different is going to happen and it's like Maybe you should just change your approach or your outlook or, you know, go read a book or something. Maybe be I mean, nice. be nicer. 
Um, okay, so let's move on to so that was being scared of rejection. So how about some examples of being unable to accept rejection? Just on the apps, uh, <laughs> yeah. because um, I think that goes in two places. But I can have another story for that one. Actually, I have an example from um, it was actually just last week when I went to Savannah. So, okay, so let's get into the story part. I was I was in Savannah last week um, just for the day. Mm-hmm. Just for the day. So I couldn't do anything for a day. So somebody uh, hit me up on Jack and um, no picture. But they were like, hey, you're very attractive or sexy. I said, thank you, smiley face. Because I have a rule. If you don't have a picture, I'll give you about three replies before I'm like, okay, I need to see you. Um, but I was like, thank you and left it at that. I'm like, I'm not meeting anybody today. The very next the very next reply I got from him after saying thank you was a dick pic. So I was like, mm, that doesn't line up. Mind you, I have three pictures of my face. <laughs> right. to, yeah, so I'm just like, mm, it's not lining up. So I paid it. I was like, I'm not even going to even acknowledge this right now because I'm not here to have sex. I'm only here for the day. Whatever. He can just sit in my inbox. The ne- the very next thing, maybe 20 minutes later, was, oh, bend that ass over and show me that hole. <laughs> right to the point. Okay. That, But mind you, I haven't responded since the first thank you. Okay. Maybe an hour later, final response. Oh, you must be ugly as shit then. But, mm. Exactly what your thought process. Nigga, you saw me. <laughs> You've already decided that you were attracted to me and complimented me on it. But because I don't want to entertain you in this nasty ass disrespectful sex talk about my anus... You're feeling rejected, and now you think I'm ugly. I can't even see you, so I can't be right. offended by this, can I? So yeah, that's that was one of those things where he felt rejected. Indeed. Uh, let's see. Do I have any other? I talked about the one example on A for A um, with this guy, and uh, so this guy had been hitting me up consistently on A for A for months, and all he has is picture because you know Adam for Adam don't give a fuck like I think whoever approves picture they be getting a life because I'm right. sure they see <laughs> they see every, all of the dicks all of the ass well, everything what's the standard like what is the standard you guys approve everything so what, right. why do I gotta I mean, wait a day yeah. as long as it, you know I mean I think they check to make sure you don't have like drugs and stuff like like illegal stuff but you know as long as it's you know, dick and ass that's free and, and clear so because all it is is a dick and an ass, which I mean, you know, for all intent and purposes, it was a nice dick. But I'm like, I'm not even sure this belongs to you. This could be anybody's dick. Ugh, um, any dick. And I've been moving more towards the if you don't have like if I can't see who you are when you hit me up, we don't really have anything to discuss. Every now and then I make an exception and I'm proving over and over again why that is a foolish decision but I continue to do it because huh, what what can you do so he, he hits me up all the time and, and the conversation is you know drier than a damn Popeye's biscuit with no drink and I'm just like why do you keep hitting me up if you don't want anything so finally you know this time he hits me up um, and I said okay now I know it says on my profile that I'm not going to converse with you if you don't have a, a face picture and I told him that I'm like, well, you don't, you know. So he asked for uh, he asked for my number every time, and whenever he asks for my number, I pay it because I'm just like, I don't know who you are. I can't I, like even it. I, there's no representation of who this person is, and I'm not giving my my personal information out to a ghost. Like that's just not that's just not what my life is about. That's not my ministry. So I didn't respond, and he gets pissed. And he sends me another message talking about, oh, you know, I've been trying to get at you, but you always be dry. And then I told him in a very, very, very polite way, I don't like giving out my personal information to people if I can't see who I'm speaking to. And he like you would have thought that I called mama his whore. mama a bitch. You would. I mean, you would have thought that I that I took this nigga's debit card and went and bought me like a PS4 like he was pissed responding in all caps he's like you know you you so dumb you don't even know that if I sent you a pic that it's a guarantee that it would be me and I was like huh I, I filed that away and I said you seem mad lol 
Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what you're so upset about because I, what I'm saying is not unreasonable. But it was also interesting to me that your response was you wouldn't know that it's me if I sent you a picture. So that makes me think you out here catfishing folk and you upset that you that I'm not allowing you to catfish me. So I don't know who dick pick that is. And he was like, grow up. And I'm like, no, you grow up. Right. Because you can see what I look like, which is why you continue to hit me up, even though my conversation is, quote unquote, dry. Blocked. Right. So, you know, he's like, I'm going to block you. And I was like, oh, you're going to block me. OK, thank you. <laughs> right. I'm like, well, you know, whatever you need to do. <laughs> you're going to block me. But you're the one who offended me. OK, cool. Got right. It. Go you for got, it. Boo. Yeah. You get offended because I asked for something simple. <laughs> and that is and it wasn't even on some I mean you got to be fine to hit me up so I mean it was just I just want to see who the fuck I'm talking to and if I'm going to be giving out my number I think that that is my right to decide whether or not I'm going to give my number to a faceless ass profile like bitch this ain't sleepy hollow I'm not talking to no headless <laughs> humping like what the fuck right and it's just I always tell people and it, it goes back to what I said earlier in the show attraction is not a bad thing and it's like it doesn't have to mean you have to be like this gorgeous person because people don't even know what the fuck i'm into a lot Mm. of times when i get boyfriends or whatever people are always shocked because they assume it's going to be one thing and it's not right and so it has nothing to do with what you think i like it's just attraction attraction is attraction but if you rob me of the opportunity to see you what am i supposed to do with that like that's unfair you don't get to say oh i'm attracted to you but you don't get to decide if you're attracted to me. That is some right. bullshit, and it's heteronormative because men do that to women all the time. Listen, so men do it to women all the time. Like the you know, men look can look any way, expect their women to be like all of them got to look like Aaliyah, Beyonce, Rihanna. whoever, right, Seven Streeter, whatever. Right. But they can just be whatever, barely wash their ass. Yeah. It's so funny you say that because I actually I have that on my <laughs> my list. It's one of my conversation topics for a future episode. Ah. Um, so I have one more example okay. of actually no this is different so I moved on to uh, the last thing that we'll or the next to the last thing we'll talk about or maybe the last thing I don't know I that was the next one it was four things were there go well we kind of we kind of jumped from the examples of being unable to accept to yeah. actual stories it so was a little double <laughs> the one that is left out is a time when you were rejected and how you handled it so I'm going to go first on this one. I'm with it. Um, now, as we were saying about attraction, now I'm of the mindset, and I think I've said this before, that you cannot force attraction. You can't force anybody to be attracted to you or anything else. So for me, anytime when I'm properly rejected, I just take it a stride to be like, oh, well, you know, I mean, there was a time where I would be in my feelings and, you know, in here, you know, boys to me and crying in the rain and shit like that. <laughs> but, uh, you know, and, in time and with maturity, I'm just like, yeah, I mean, okay, I don't, whatever. So here's the story. So there's this guy. I have this. I have this bad habit, and I'm. On, I think I'm gonna talk about this on a future episode. I have this bad habit of backtracking, because I'm. I like familiarity. These niggas out here, like, you know, it's like if it's a choice between going back to something that I know, versus these new niggas, I usually go back to what I know, which is, anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> so this guy that I met, I don't know, years, years and years ago, we reconnected on Growler. And, uh, you know, we, we chat, we talk it up. Hey, how's it going? What's been going on? Blah, blah, blah. All that bullshit that, you know, you're not sure if you actually care or if they care. But, you know, you, you be polite. Um, So it's like, OK, you know, we should meet up. Da, 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 da. You know, he's like, OK, I'll come and, and chill out with you. Let's go, you know, get something to eat. We get some Chinese takeout. And I I want to say he paid for it. Like, he met me at the restaurant and paid for it. Followed me back to my apartment. We talk. You know, we do what grown men do. You know, we came, came not quick. Or maybe quick. I don't remember. Whatever you came, yes. Right. Um, so, me being me, I'm like, okay. I said to him something to the effect of, you know, we keep gravitating back towards each other. So maybe we should actually see what's going on. Like maybe there is something between us and we should see what that is. To which he responds, I'm actually seeing someone now that I really, really like. I'm sorry. And so I'm sitting hmm. there 
I think still naked. And I'm just like, oh, okay. You know, now obviously internally I'm screaming and I'm cussing and I'm just like, so you just conveniently don't mention this boo prior to nuts being busted. <sighs> Nigga shit. Um, and so, yeah. but you know, again, I just paid it because I was like, you know, that there's, it lets me know that there's something there that is not for me. Like, this is not what is supposed to be in my life. And it's so funny because he left his, he left his tie in my apartment. It was the Kevin. That was, <laughs> <laughs> that was the ugliest fucking tie I've ever seen in my life. Oh, so you dodged a bullet. Okay, cool. You it, was, it was like an <laughs> ugly brown tie. And I was just like, why would you wear Dookie around your neck? Like, this looks terrible. You can't date someone who makes bad decisions. You dodged a bullet. You, you know? good. So I just put the tie <laughs> in the trash. And I just I was like, whatever. Because, you know, uh, and I think we had some kind of conversation a little bit. Um, and I don't know how we got on the topic of me being a bigger guy. And I was like, I mean, that ain't that what? And he's like, you know, because my ex was bigger. And I was like, what does that have to do with you not being honest with me? But I had to take it in stride. I was like, you know, I've been rejected. Um, it's not an ideal situation because I don't, that's not something that I would normally do. Like, if I know you have a boo, no, you can't come to my house. I don't give a damn if you are buying me Szechuan chicken. It's not going, go, it's not going down because I don't, that's just not <laughs> my, my thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but I agree. Bullet dodged. Um, so, uh, what about you? You have a story about when you were rejected? Absolutely. Actually, I have two, but I'll make them short. Come on, two. Um, cause, yeah, because, yeah, well, Speak you know, I, I want to show contrast because it's important. Okay. I think growth is important. Okay. So back when I was 20, I'm 31. Uh, when I was 20, I was dating this guy. And basically, you know, here I am seeking validation through people and shit because I'm thinking like, oh, relationships gonna make me feel whole or whatever. You know, that was long eons ago. Yeah, that shit that you pre-programmed with. Up. Pretty, pretty much. It was bullshit. But anyway, he was pretty much dating me and this other guy. Of course. And we both knew about each other. And this is back in MySpace days. He had us as his and his both of us in his top eight at like two and three next to each other at all the all like it was crazy and i remember like this kind of almost competition that was happening you know and it was it was never any hate per se like i was never like trying to fight nobody that's not my style but i remember it always being kind of like this thing well as you probably know from now he ended up being with the other guy mm -hmm. they ended up being together for like three four years and I remember still seeing them out together at certain parties of mutual friends and it would oh it killed me inside like it made me feel like shit because of how everything went down but I realized it had nothing to do with me but everything about how fucked up <laughs> someone has to be to even treat people like that right it was you know, some stuff like that but I also had to learn how to you know validate myself realize that it's not within something like that so that was a that was my terrible story of rejection it was terrible I hated it like I I would avoid going to parties and shit <laughs> like I, I'm like I don't want to go and see them mm. because it was always in my face like damn like you really did that shit and now you're with him having this wonderful relationship but they end up breaking up and I was like ha ha but whatever <laughs> Um, and he ended, he ended up being trash too, but that's a whole other story. I mean, of course, it was trash <laughs> from the beginning. Bullet dodge, but that's one of those universe things where yeah. it's like you know you dodged a bullet. Mm -hmm. So fast forward to maybe I want to I'll say two months. I'm thinking it was more like a month and a half ago, but two months. And I spoke about it on my show too. This was actually um, a week after the episode I had with my friend. We talked about relationships and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I met this guy and we went on quite a few we went on a few dates and we had so much in common oh, yeah, like, I remember this story yep exactly We it is perfect we dug each other like religion I, I'm not religious um, I, I grew up in it but I left it at like 26 and so that's that's a really huge piece Same especially with, <laughs> yeah but it's really huge with other black people you know like oh what you don't go to church on Sunday oh my god you know so we vibed on that I was like oh shit we vibed on like the whole prep thing. We both were on prep. Like it was just this whole thing where it was just like, damn, we got all this in common. There were, you know, sexual positions were fell in line. Everything was good. He lived, um, he's like two miles from me. It was like a four minute drive. Come on, like, convenient I, dick. Listen, convenient. It was cool. Like vibe was cool. 
we were chilling one night and I told him about my views on relationships and he didn't like it and all he heard was what my friend heard open when you know what I said you said on your show all I said was I can go either way what I want is transparency Yes. If we're going to be monogamous, we're going to be monogamous. If we're going to be open, we're going to be open. But all he heard was, I want an open relationship. And I'm like, that's unfair. But he ended up coming over to my house one day, and I thought something was up. He came up, he came over pretty much to tell me that he couldn't date me anymore because of that. He was just like, he just felt like, you know, I'm saying one thing, but he feels like if we did get a relationship years later, it may come back to bite him in the ass. And mm-hmm. he likes the idea of being possessive. He likes feeling like he does own somebody and loves. Mm-hmm. He still wanted the whole fairy tale thing, and I couldn't offer that. And I was like, well, I stood in my truth, so I can't be mad. But I was hurt. I was hurt, but I also realized it was better that way because who wants to be in something where they can't be their authentic self? Like, I could have easily lied to him like a lot of these other niggas do and say, oh, yeah, this is fine. And then they (laughs) cheat and do everything else. Mm -hmm. But I'm offering you full honesty, full transparency. And you you scoff at that and say that I'm damaged goods. Okay, fine. So um, it it, it hurt, but I didn't let it get the best of me. I literally went on with my life. And it was a a testament to my growth as a person when it came to those things. I was like, you know what? It's fine. Because first of all, I want him, I wish him the best. I want him to meet somebody that fits all of those qualifications. He needs to experience that for himself. And then I also want to meet someone who is aligned with how I think too without being threatened by that. I'm not offering you um something bad i'm actually giving you a gift right <laughs> but people don't see that and so it was it was rough i thought about it a few times but then i and i moved on really quickly and was like okay well there's that but it just <laughs> sucked meeting somebody that i was so compatible with mm-hmm. and then that be the thing that be like yeah no i can't date you because it's like oh okay well here we are so those are my two stories so the interesting thing about this story is you categorize this story as a time when you were rejected and how you handled it. But within the story, it kind of goes back to someone else being afraid of rejection. It does connect to that too. Because so I got, the I got whole rejected time, because of rejection. <laughs> right. You got, you, you get rejected because they're scared of being rejected at a later date. And I thought that that was very interesting. So kudos to you. Come on and tie it and make it full circle with one story. Yes, that's 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 interesting. That's a good concept too. Some people do reject others because they want to get rejected. That's why when some people meet the guy or the girl of their dreams and they fuck it up, they self sabotage because they feel like it's gonna hurt too bad in the end, and they mess it up for themselves because they don't believe they deserve it, which is crazy. Crazy. Okay. Uh, rejection will it will get it you, will or the fear of up. the fear of it rather. Rejection itself is not that bad. The fear of rejection will get you. Yes. Um, okay, so let's move on to the the next kind of mini topic. With I want to talk about rejection within the actual dating situation. You've gotten past, you know, dick pics and and you know, unlock lock on jacked and all of that kind of stuff. You're actually dating or in a relationship with someone. Mm-hmm. So, do you think that rejection exists within the actual relationship? Yes, I do. Agreed. Um, I think that feeling rejected in your relationship or your dating situation, your situationship, whatever the fuck that you are in, um, I think that it can lead to a, a lot of different stuff too. You know, when you when you're feeling rejected in your relationship, you know, it, it leads to depression and weight gain or weight loss. You know, loss mm-hmm. of confidence, arguing and infidelity, and who who know? I mean, a host of other things. So I, I definitely think that that's something that. Just because you've gotten past that courting stage and you haven't rejected each other yet, it doesn't mean that you're free and clear. It's still something that is, in my opinion, prevalent in relationships because, as you said, people lie. They lie to themselves and they lie to their partners. And they get into these situations where they don't want something or they want something and they're not getting it. And it leads to all kinds of problems and Mm -hmm. issues. 
And security is important. Like you have to be secure yourself. Make sure you're doing your own self care. Make sure you're keeping your own self esteem up. Like Cat Williams said, it's esteem of your motherfucking self. Yep. You have to take care of yourself because yes, rejection does happen. There'll be a day where the person who used to bang your back out doesn't want to do it as much anymore, or just isn't attracted in the same way. And a lot of times that doesn't have anything to do with you. Sometimes it does. You know, if you stop doing your regimen or whatever, that can happen. But some things just naturally fade, and you. Have to make sure that you're secure in yourself and realize that things happen and change is inevitable yeah. and you have to be ready for that because there'll, there'll come a day where he'll choose his mom or his family or his friends over you or she'll do this instead of doing this for you it happens it's it's kind of human nature honestly um not so that it has to be expected but don't take it off the docket you know right. but be secure in yourself understand that you're still a whole person without someone else no one completes you fuck that bullshit you got from somebody's mary j blige song or whatever that's bullshit you see what auntie mary is, is dealing with going so. through it right complete in you, the fuck you, complete and listen losing 30k yourself. a month <laughs> right complete yourself you are whole on your own people can accommodate they can even be i won't say accessory because that sounds like possession they can compliment mm-hmm. you but they don't complete you and once you realize that it, it's a lot easier to move on without the constant validation of others don't seek validation of others validate yourself know that you're good make the changes that need to be made but don't allow someone else's constant validation of you make you feel like, you know, you're not worth it. I agree. And one other thing is I think we need to be mindful of creating situations in our head because like you were saying, you know, you may feel rejected because he's choosing his family. It's not actually rejection. Like, right. People have multiple relationships. But I think, again, it goes back to what you were saying about possession. You feel like this is my possession and he should only care about me i'm not saying everyone i mean you know there's plenty of mature relationships out there but i think in a lot of situations people make these things up in their head and you Mm -hmm. feel like you're being rejected okay he might he might have changed his shift and or you know he may be working on a new project and he's a little bit more tired than he usually is so he's not he's not you know taking you to pound town as much not because he doesn't want to but because he's tired Right. But in your head, you see it a different way. And now you're you're telling yourself you're being rejected and you start nitpicking on yourself. Maybe I've gained weight. Maybe this, maybe that. When or you start or you start nagging about shit that's irrelevant. Right. You start picking (laughs) fights and all that kind of stuff. And all of that is because you are feeling rejected. But it's a situation that you created. There are plenty of situations where you will be flat the fuck out rejected. You don't need to create that shit for yourself, especially if you are in a relationship to a good person. Um, so let's wrap this discussion up with this last question. Okay. Um, how about some tips on how to handle feeling rejected? Ooh, yes, let's do that. Uh, so for me, and I feel like your answer probably will be similar, but I think the communication is probably number one. If you feel it, you need to make it known. Because Mm -hmm. no good will come from you trying to bottle it in. You may find out through communicating, as I just said, that you're actually not being rejected. But as and as you said, you're suffering from insecurity or there's something going on that you didn't know about. But it's not this huge end all be all the end of the damn world. But if you don't communicate, you won't know that and you won't find out. And even if it is, in fact, that you are being rejected, you still need to have that communication because you can't or I'm gonna say you can't you can but it's not healthy to sit there in a situation where you're feeling unfulfilled and you're feeling rejected and you're feeling less than so at the very least that conversation will come about of okay now I know what it is I can make a decision on what it is that I want to do you know yeah um I'm trying my best not to be like rejection is God's protection. No, (laughs) (laughs) but what I will say is go out, shoot your shot, get rejected. It's good for your health because number one, being rejected lets you know what's for you and what's not. And if you've been rejected enough, if you've gotten a million no's, that yes feels so fucking good. And that yes will happen. Mm-hmm. But you but don't let it keep you from just going after what you want. It just it makes it makes it a lot more sweet after you've gone through all this hour. Now, 
as far as like being emotionally intelligent mm. listen just because someone rejects you like that's that's based on their preferences that's based on them don't be out here calling people bitches and hoes and dissing a mama and getting upset especially when it comes to like the the street callers that yeah. drives me crazy like there's women who lost their lives all because they said no to a man's unwanted advances you know what i mean like yeah. you gotta know how to nip that shit in the butt not everybody's gonna be for you a lot of people aren't going to be for you. Just take the no in stride and let it be. You insulting them doesn't make anything better. Sure, it hurts your ego, but your ego is high enough to talk to a stranger any kind of way. So it should be hard enough to take that diss. It is what it is. Yeah. And you being negative to them is not going to entice them to do anything other than run away or retaliate or, you know, right. pull out a switchblade and then your ass sitting here gutted and you upset. And it didn't have to be that way. And I think last point. Uh, to what you were saying about you know being rejected and and going out and trying and that that yes will be heavenly, I think that rejection also is part of the natural order to steer us and teach us what it is that we actually like. Mm-hmm. Because as we said before, you know you get so caught up in okay she got to be a bad bitch or he got to be you know he got to have a, a 32 inch waist and he got to do this and you know climb up the wall and you know smother oxtail while riding dick and all this other unnecessary and unrealistic stuff and i think those rejections help you start it jars you or it should again if you're emotionally intelligent it jars you and it makes you sit back and think and, and you wonder is this the kind of person that i actually want am i right. going after the same type of people the same type of women the same type of men the same type of whatever because I actually want it or is the universe trying to tell me this ain't for you and also yeah because uh, two things maybe the type you're checking for ain't checking for you right. you need to accept that and then I had to confront something actually in my life I used to always go for a certain type in my earlier 20s and I had to realize they were the straight boy types I couldn't get in high school and middle school so when I was in my early 20s, I would always go for those same those same basketball looking types, you know, athletic shaped, uh, had Come a certain on, swag about them. But you know what I mean, though? But it was it was yeah. very much from high school, the straight boys that I could I could never date. It was that. And then I had to realize, like, but those niggas ain't checking for me like that. <laughs> and well, and that that even that's different because like I don't even now I don't even have a type. It's about it is attraction is very fucking important. I will never tell that lie. But <laughs> it's a combination of attraction and chemistry. Yes. You can be fine as all get out, but as soon as I detect any kind of attitude that doesn't flow with me, I'm not attracted anymore. It's a balance. But or if they, we're gonna be honest, a lot of the most attractive people on Instagram and Tumblr and everything are boring as fuck. As shit. Uh, shit, they got it's like Beyonce syndrome. Beyonce is a wonderful performer, and I love her to death, a stan. But I wouldn't want to kick it with her. I'm convinced. I've seen so many interviews. I'm like, girl, it's actually pretty damn dry. But like performance, she gives you all of your life. I don't know because those snippets that we get when Beyonce is on that drink, on that drink, I'm talking about I regular would, Beyonce. I, would, I, I don't. I, Anyway, we'll, we'll that's a whole right. we'll get a whole into a rabbit thing. hole. But, of but, but, but those things though, like I'm a Beyonce stand for her performances and how she perform. Like she gives me so much life, but I feel like in her everyday life, she would probably be very, very chill and mellow. And I'd be like, okay, yeah. this isn't what I expected. But hey, go for yeah. it. I think with but, interviews, I think she just don't want to do that shit. So <laughs> she, she like, <laughs> I mean, I guess right. I'm here because yeah. I mean, in case in point, because she don't she doesn't do them at all anymore. Well, think about, but think about, but that's also a creative thing too. Think about Michael Jackson. He yeah. he too was very mellow and chill, but on stage, bigger than life. You know, Maybe sometimes that's it's a just Virgo a thing. Yeah, I think it is too. It's a, it's presentation though, yeah. and I think a lot that what beauty we also. To be fair, we do tend to project things on the people who we feel are beautiful too. Whew. Well, that's think. A word. Yeah, we'll think like, oh, because you like this, you got to be this. And that's not always right. true either. And I think one of the main things that I see, and I think it, again, ties to being afraid of rejection. I see this a lot that people project what they think. And I think you said this earlier. People reje- project what they think your type is onto yep. you just because you're beautiful. Or yeah. in, in, their, in, in their case, beautiful. Because I, not every, anyway, let me not say that. 
Listen, I'm, let me tell you something. I, I'm, I'm, I try to be as humble as possible. I, I know that people find me attractive. I'm not dumb now. But I get a lot of that in my DMs. A lot of the, oh, you probably got all these hoes. Or, oh, you probably you only know, into this. Shit. Or you probably only into that. And I'm like, no, that's not true at all. <laughs> like, but even if it was, that. why are you counting my bodies? How does that, how does that help you? Well, because it's one of those things that make people feel better for a rejection I haven't even given them. And that's what kills me. I'm like, have right. you ever thought about just asking me out? Have you thought about that? No. Instead of being no. like, oh, where the hoes at? Or you got to, how about you say, hey, can I take you out? I might say yes, but no one's figured that out yet. No one's figured that out yet. They rather project all their bullshit onto my following count or <laughs> like right. what's on the podcast or a shirtless pic that I posted. They're like, oh, okay, you got to be this. No, I'm no. I, I honestly am chilling. <laughs> I mean, shout out to the per- to the shirtless pics, but I agree. I, I think that 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 runs rampant. And again, it's just because you're you're so scared of shooting your shot that you don't even want to get on the court, right? But be respectful. But at the same shoot your time, because some of y'all, some people shooting shots and they disrespectful though. That's right. the, you got to know how to you know don't be bringing your damn footballs on the basketball court. Right. Like you got to have an actual basketball, the right attire. You can't come to me talking about bend over and show me that hole. What Listen. response do you want from me? Listen, because <laughs> like, you, would be, you know, and I'm the type to you know I would probably send you all kinds of holes, but it's gonna be like hippopotamus and. You know, uh, and lions. I mean, you said you wanted to see some right, holes. holes. Here's some I holes. can show but you just, some holes, but well, somebody, right, you know, people who, sh- who should shoot their shot don't, and the ones who do are doing terrible at it. Like, be respectful and respect get, goes a long way. It, it, does, it doesn't make you soft. It doesn't make you anything. But you say, "Hey, can I take you out?" You'd be shocked. Yeah, I feel like that whole type thing is a whole different conversation. Something that somebody one of us at some point we'll probably get into further but uh i don't have anything else to add to the rejection conversation what it was about a great you? conversation i, I enjoyed agree. that i agree yeah i'm gonna watch him come with something tomorrow morning it's gonna be a <laughs> random ass moment where i'm listen. like take it out the trash but like, god damn it i should have said this listen <laughs> it never fails when i listen back to the shows i'm like now i have four thousand additional things to say <laughs> and I couldn't think of shit at the time, motherfucker. Yeah. Anyway, no. um, okay. So I usually like to close out my shows with guests with uh, asking some questions. I call this segment the Queer Query. Oh. So uh, I just have a couple of questions. I think it's good. It gives you know people a chance to hear my guests and maybe learn a little bit more about them outside of the conversation because I think that sometimes when we are on these podcasts and you guest on someone else's podcast they kind of they put you in this bubble based on the conversation that took place that can happen that's true so I like to switch it up a little bit and ask some different kinds of questions so let's do this so first question is what's something that you like or that you do that you feel you can never outgrow. Something that I do that I'll never outgrow. Ooh. Or something that you just like. I feel like it's. I'm always going to... Music is one of those things where it comes to like what I listen to. I can still listen to stuff I listened to as a kid. And it could be like pop music like Backstreet yeah. Boys shit for teenage girls and I'm a grown ass man and I'll still <laughs> I still get my life from I Want It That Way or Bye 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 or you know what I mean yeah. and it's like it'll never change because it's linked to memories yeah it's so funny that that's your answer because initially I was going to ask you something Janet related yes Janet that's my girl <laughs> but I was like yeah they can you know, if they listen to your podcast, then they know that you Janet you're a Janet is, Stan. Janet, I'm a Janet Stan. I'm, yeah, equally Janet and B. I just one came before the other. Yeah. <laughs> um, for love, love me, I would say playing video games. I don't think that that's something that I'll ever outgrow. And I don't play video games all the time. I'm not one of those, you know, mad. I gotta be up on the latest Madden, or I gotta be up on the latest NBA 2K or whatever. But I don't think that I'll ever stop playing. I mean, because as you were saying, and the same thing with me with music, but there are games that I played when I was a child or when I was younger that I play and I get that nostalgia. I get that feeling. And it's just, you know, a good way to pass some time, blow off some steam. 
Yeah, it's stress relief. It's self care. That definitely falls in self care. Yeah. I play Sonic. I play Sonic one and two on my Apple TV, so I Listen, understand it completely. Sonic is everything. <laughs> mm. Everything. I think there's anyway. We're not even gonna get into that because I'm not <laughs> sure. Um, okay, second question. What's your dream photo shoot? Now I picked this question specifically because you are a photographer. I like to try to tailor the questions if I know a little bit about the guest. No, oh, I'm here for that. Um, my dream. Damn, it would. Uh, it's it's a toss up between Barack and Michelle. Oh, that's a good one. And well, Beyonce, but Beyonce wouldn't be a photo shoot. I would want to be her photographer, like that follows her around and takes all those Ooh. fucking candidates. Yeah, like she paid me like some odd thousands a year, and I literally just take pictures of her all day every day. Like that would just. <laughs> that, shit. that would be everything and I'm sure quite lucrative and when I was done I would open up a studio because what could you tell me after I'm taking Beyonce's pictures for like a year not like every day not, <laughs> not a damn thing but yeah that would be it <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> my well, answer was something different but then when all the rumors about the twins being born came out my answer changed and I was like my dream photo shoot I mean not that I'm a photographer I don't take pictures I do not have a camera don't ask me <laughs> I'm gonna refer you to Kevin. <laughs> yes, but uh, it would be be in the in the Gemini twins. Mm-hmm. Sorry, not sorry. And that's in that piggybacks. Can you imagine all the shit and tea I would get? Listen. I couldn't tell nobody because the NDA. But can you imagine all my eyes would see I, mm, by I just being around all the time? I wouldn't even tell anybody. I would have it written down somewhere so that future generations can come stumble. I put in a time capsule. Right, because you know those NDAs are tight. If you, yeah. you will die. There's no sue. You die. <laughs> like, Especially with Beyonce because most people who've crossed her in that way is like, are they still on this planet or are they yeah. s- under the you, planet? You don't get sued. You die. You die. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> so yeah, I would just see all this stuff and be like, ooh, can't tell nobody. Yes, indeed. Okay, <laughs> next question. What song or songs are they playing at your celebration of life? Come through. I had to change the wording because I was like, this is kind of morbid. I don't like this wording. That's so I like. It, I call it a celebration of life. So what would they play? They would play. Give me a second because I, I already know where to look, but let me just figure it out. Um, <laughs> they will play Sounds of Blackness, Optimistic. Oh, okay. Come on. Uh, they'll play Desiree, You Gotta Be. Oh, I love that song. And Janet Special. I like it. I like it. Okay. Um, At my celebration of life, what song would they play? Oh, let's see. I think they would probably play Yankin' by Lady. Hey! <laughs> I, gotta, I, I gotta play that after this. Yes. <laughs> um, and then after that, they'll play Fantasy by Earth, Wind & Fire. Because it's one through. of my all-time favorite songs. I love it. All right, Those I got are both songs. one more. I have a wild card question. Yes, I'm here for it. So this is kind of a this kind of a lame cliche type thing, but I found that people's answers are very interesting. It kind of gives you more insight. So I like to do. I want to do a quick round of fuck Mary kill. Oh, okay. So this is going to be an actor edition. Oh. So, Kevin, fuck, Mary kill. Jesse Williams, John Boyega, Will Smith. Mm, okay. Oh, that's actually easy. Okay, oh, I'd, on, fuck, easy. I, I'd fuck John Boyega. I'd uh, marry Jesse Williams. I'd kill Will Smith. Oh, sorry, Will. Yeah, I, you know what's funny is I've never been into Will Smith, like attracted. Like I've always liked him, like comedy yep. wise, mm-hmm. but I always felt his looks were just like whatever to me. But people be like, "Oh my God, Will Smith!" I'm like, I never jacked off to him. So Ooh, come on, be, but, be candid about it. But but John Boyega is really like he's sexy, but he's young, so I definitely fuck. I don't have any rules on that. But <laughs> but Jesse Williams has the type of mentality yeah. and intelligence and maturity that I would want to be with and yeah. fuck. He's hashtag woke bae. <laughs> right. I, yeah, I'd still fuck him too, but you know, but I'd yeah. be married to him and fuck him, so. I always, <laughs> I always wonder on this game, it's like, is it, is it traditional marriage? Like, can you, or is it just you're married and you can't fuck? Because that changes answers, I think. 
But I'm I just nobody I can't fuck. I just assume that if it's marriage, that means I'm fucking you too. Right. And we just happen to be married. It puts you on a higher standard. I'm sharing finances and shit with you. Right. Okay. Uh my answers. Um these two are probably interchangeable, but I think I would fuck Will Smith. Now I agree with you up to a certain point. Like I, I like Fresh Prince and and when he was younger, I was like, I mean, I guess he I mean he tall, I guess, but what I don't get it. Yeah. Um, my attraction to Will Smith didn't really start until Hancock. Okay. Hancock and what's the other movie? Uh I Robot. Like when I saw his body and those I was like, okay, I, I I'm I'm here for it. Like I'm I'm present, I'm on time. I, I bought my ticket and I'm in the front row. Yeah. So I think I would fuck Will. I would marry John because I would listen, John Boyega is and I've talked about I don't I think I've mentioned him before. I may have even mentioned him in this game before, but you know, I, I low key stand for him. Even though he's young. He's a phenomenal actor though. He is. Like he's talented and you know, I mean he he, he looks like he has a big dick. Oh, meaty. Mm-hmm. And he has thighs and ass for the mm-hmm. guy. You know what I mean? Oh. He, you know, it's just John. Especially like, Imperial Dreams. Like he gave you a good old backstroke. Ugh. So I would I would <laughs> marry him because we just we just need to fuck continually. Like it's not a one time thing. Mm-hmm. And so I guess I would kill Jesse Williams. Sorry, Woke Bay. I mean I guess it happens. It is know. what it is, you know. Yeah. But yes. So that was an awesome conversation. Thank you so much. So why don't you tell the people where they can find you, your podcast, and all of the things that you do? Absolutely. Um, you can check out uh, my website, which is the hub for all things Kevin Dwayne, and that is KevinDwayne dot com. And Dwayne is D W A Y N E. You can also correctly <laughs> spell correctly. People added E's and everything else. I'm like, where you get that from, girl? But <laughs> KevinDwayne dot com. Uh, you can also find the Outline Podcast on my website, or you can go to what's that soundcloud stitcher google play apple podcast all those good podcast places and then you can follow me on twitter and instagram at the world of kevin spelt correctly no spaces and that's it awesome <laughs> um i want to say thank you so much for reaching out thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule I know you have things to do. You have a podcast of your own. So I'm yes. really appreciative that you you know, took the time to come and be on the show. Oh, I loved it. Thank you for having me. It was a really good time to talk. And I told you before the show started, it's nice to let somebody else drive for once and let you yeah. figure out all that <laughs> stuff. And I just sit here and talk. <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, let me not drive this bitch into a ditch. Oh, no, you did very well. It was a great conversation. We talked about really meaningful things. So I appreciate being on the show. And hopefully it's not the last time. You always got to have a, a revisit. Yeah. And you got to be on my show, too. So you guys Ooh. be on the lookout for when he's on my show. I'm looking hopefully... forward to that so I don't have to do shit and I can just show exact- up and talk. Exactly. <laughs> Bump my damn gums. All right. Uh, last few things, you guys. Make sure that you are checking out the Sounds of the Stories playlist on SoundCloud. My friend Naj, a.k.a. Chartreuse Disaster, does that. I think I need to get on his case about updating that because I don't think he's done that in a bit. But he has a pretty good ear for music, you know, and he's not putting a bunch of auntie jams on there like I was <laughs> like I teased him about doing. Um all of my things, you know, again, GaySideStories.com is my hub for all things that I'm doing, writing, uh, the podcast, all of my guests. You can see, you know, a nice little photo and all of their information there. I will get back on the horse of writing these short stories um, and the blog, but it's it's just been a lot, you know. Plus, it was my birthday, so whatever. Fuck y'all. <laughs> Not fuck y'all, but <laughs> that came out wrong. When in doubt, fuck y'all. <laughs> But you know, it you know sometimes it gets a little bit overwhelming trying to do things, and I've like I said, I've had so many thoughts and ideas for the show that I had to take some time to lay them out and have a schedule of what I'm going to do and who I'm going to do it with. So, with that being said, thank you everyone for listening. Please share this podcast with someone if you enjoy it. Again, go on our iTunes, leave a five star review, help people find it. And as always, you guys, make sure that you are protecting your walls or they will crumble or something else that's worse, you know, depending (laughs) on what kind of walls you're talking about. And we are done. We are out.